Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God, the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Almighty God, who has knit together thine elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of thy Son, Christ our Lord, grant us grace over to follow thy blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living that we may come to those ineffable joys which thou hast prepared for those who unfeignedly believe thee and love thee, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation, the seventh chapter beginning with the ninth verse. After this, I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressing me, saying, Who are the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out from the 
of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Here endeth the lesson. Let us join together in unison and recite the psalm. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant. Let your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Haste and see that the Lord is good, Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints. For those who fear him lack nothing. The lungs lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none who trust in him. A reading from the the first epistle of St. John, chapter 3, beginning with the first verse. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Here endeth the epistle. Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who 
hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. In ancient times, astrologers gave special significance to those occasions when various planets, the moon, certain constellations, were seen in alignment. They believed these were portents in the heavens, in their calendars, that some great event was coming to pass, not fully known or understood but observed as an auspicious or inauspicious sign. So perhaps today, we are called to consider the meaning, the, the coincidence between several simultaneous events in our calendar and time. Today, we celebrate All Saints Day, following falling today on a Sunday, which is not usual. And that day, of course, another coincidence, Sunday is always a day of resurrection and new creation. This also, in our secular lives, coincides with perhaps the most significant election time in our lifetime, as well as with the highest surge today in the most deadly pandemic which Earth has experienced in over a century. And finally, coinciding in this time, we have shifted from daylight savings time to Eastern Standard Time again. So today I will try to say some things concerning the relationship that comes to mind between these events. I'll just start by saying one of the themes that I hope you will think of is that our time is not God's time. God wears a different watch and is changing from Daylight Savings to Eastern Standard reminds us how much we're governed by our own estimation of time. But I hope all of you know that God works with a different time schedule. Something may happen quickly, which God ordains. Something may take a much longer time where a thousand years are in his sight as a single day. So let me say that first. Next, our Christian celebration of the lives of holy men and women through the ages, we recognize today. There are still saints, we are all saints to some measure, and there are still great saints among us. And we celebrate the, the lives of people like John Lewis and others who, who fought for right and 
Part of the reason they fought for right was that they were Christians. Next, our national concern with the forthcoming outcome of the election, which is a bitter struggle for leadership in our country in a badly divided country. And then next, our apprehension, our fear and uncertainty in confrontation with a deadly pandemic over which none on earth have yet devised any means of control or abatement. All those things are together with us today. So on this day, our Holy Mother, the Church, provided us with some comfort and strength in the scriptural witness. First, from the revelation to John, the vision of the heavenly church, triumphant, the new Israel, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and peoples and races and tongues standing before God's throne, praising their deliverance through the blood of the Lamb, Christ's victory over sin and death. Hold that image in your mind. The church eventually triumphant. Next, our epistle lesson by John the Evangelist it reminded us that even now, even now, here, Amidst problems and worries, we should rejoice in our adoption as sons and daughters of God, his children, brothers and sisters of Jesus, the Messiah, having confidence that come what may in our future earthly years, we can be separated from divine love. We are God's children. And when Christ comes in glory at the end of history, we shall be like him, Paul tells us, or John tells us, and we shall ever be with him. Finally today, we, we read and heard what have been called the Beatitudes, as recorded in Matthew's Gospel. Now, an interesting thing, when I was preparing the sermon, I recalled what commentators had said, pointing out that these pronouncements of blessedness, blessed be the poor in spirit, blessed be peacemakers, these, these things, these portents of divine happiness, blessedness, are not addressed to eight different groups of people. But in one way, they are describing different aspects of one ideal believer and disciple, one ideal saint. If we are saints, we may show forth all of the characteristics described in Jesus' beatitude. To put it another way, when we, for the sake of our faith in God and his Christ, suffer any or all of the hardships and conditions that the Beatitudes describe, we should know that we are blessed by God and called to enjoy his happiness, even in the midst of our earthly trials and tribulation. The first Beatitude sometimes confuses people. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That term, used poor in spirit. The Hebrew term for that, translated, was the Jewish word applied to those who were the remnant of Israel. So the same word was applied, poor in spirit is our translation, but it was a word applied to the remnant. Those who had suffered not only physical poverty, the loss of Jerusalem, their homes, being carried off as prisoners to Babylon, but whose spirits had been crushed by their captors. You remember, you remember the lesson in the Bible where in, in 
If it's talking about by the waters of Babylon, we sat down and wept. And our captor said, sing us one of your Zion songs. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Boy, that comes across to us as we're looking at problems in our own nation and some of our own personal difficulties. And we come to church maybe. And how, how, of course today, because of the pandemic, we don't sing. But how can we sing God's joyful songs in the midst of problems? But God will save us. The Beatitude says God will give us a new and better kingdom. Therefore, rejoice. Christian scholars tell us this word is used and translated in Psalm 34. Not the verses we read today, but in the 18th verse, it, it says, those whose spirit is crushed. This is the way it goes. The Lord is close to those whose courage is broken. That's what poor in spirit means. And he, he saves those whose spirit is crushed. The good man's misfortunes may be many, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. So that keep in your minds today in spite of your sadness over personal or national problems and the pandemic, the Lord will deliver us out of it all. As we worry and fear today an adverse outcome to our election, as we envision civil conflict and maybe even violence in our streets during this period of tension in our country. If results are delayed or ambiguous. And we worry sometimes that even our own spirits will be broken if to us it appears that injustice and division and hatred in our national and community life seem to triumph over love and peace. So we are apprehensive about November the 3rd. But we must, on that day, hear the echo in our minds, blessed are the poor in spirit, whose spirits are crushed. Yours will be the kingdom of heaven. The second beatitude addresses those who mourn. It recalls us in our minds not only to the loss of loved ones as recently dead, maybe somebody who's died of COVID, but reminds us of the prophets and the saints and the martyrs who through the centuries were killed by merciless wars, by plague, pestilence, famine, batter, battle, murder, the things we talk about when we say the litany. We may think of those killed in Hiroshima, of those killed by AIDS. We now, who mourn the death of over 250,000 slain by COVID, Jesus in the Beatitudes promises us we shall be blessed by God's comforting strength to continue our battle against the pandemic, against warfare, disease, despair. Meekness in the third beatitude really means faithful patience. It's not really being meek. It, I looked up and it, the word really kind of means a faithful patience of those who depend on God and don't think they can do it all by themselves. So we are called on this All Saints Day to show forth a faithful patience until God in his good time comes to our aid. This quality likewise speaks to our present situation. Yes, we must fight for political change, 
We must fight with our voice and our vote. We must acknowledge the reality of a pandemic that is not just going away by magic. But we must have patience. Vaccines, solutions, don't necessarily come overnight. We must show a meekness that affirms our belief that in God's good time, as T.S. Eliot said, all manner of things shall be well. That contrary to the dictates of what may be common sense and opinion, contrary to the boasts of bullies, those who are patient in faith will inherit the earth. Not the overconfident people, not the bullies, not those who are anxious to get it done today or tomorrow, but those who have that meek patience that God asks of us. They will inherit the earth. That sounds crazy, but that's what Jesus is saying. And so we could go on through the Beatitudes thinking of hunger and thirst, not only physical but spiritual. We can think of, of the need for mercy, mercy for condemned prisoners, mercy for children separated from their parents at the border. We can envision our call to be peacemakers not just between family members arguing over politics, and not just peacemakers in our nation, where we are so divided between races and classes, between blacks and whites, between haves and have-nots, between immigrants, refugees from all corners of the globe. We are called to be peacemakers between Jews and Palestinians, the possessed and the dispossessed. We know that peacemaking is not easy. But Christ in his beatitude promises we will be blessed. If we are peacemakers, we'll be called God's true children. And finally, we think of our own terror and agony in the face of persecution. We recall the lives of the saints who in every age have been tortured and martyred and suffered. Some are well known and are honored, but some there be who have no memorial, who are perished as though they had never been. But today here, we ask God to bring them to remembrance and to join in our prayers with them for them. But we are called only to remember not just the Beatitudes, but the entire symbolic meaning of All Saints Day and of All Hallows Eve, Halloween. Even its debased, candy-centered, costume manifestation has something to do with our faith. Recall the dark, demonic fears of earlier ages, the Valsporgus Nachs, the dark nights full of real terrors, the demons and witches and ghosts, the living dead, the red death, the bubonic plague, the Viking raids. Those are the terrors and fears of the night, the things that go bump in the night in an old litany verse personify powers of evil which long ago were perceived and believed to run wild through the world on certain times. And it was useless, impossible to resist these evil forces. Death and destruction, pestilence and famine came from where we knew not to many lands and many peoples like a thief in the night. They were much more sinister and still are if we let ourselves envision them. These things are much more sinister than costume children at the door calling trick or treat. And the dangers of these evils are not easily 
pushed to the bottom of our minds and shaken off. We still sometimes feel the evening's darkness belonging to the powers of evil. Evils enacted by other men and women. By the forces of Satan, the forces of darkness, by the vapors carrying deadly disease that we can't see. And only the fool is not terrified by the ghastly powers that we know are out there. But God, who is church, has proclaimed, fear not. Look, hear, remember. Remember the lives of the saints and this day of their celebrated triumph over, over the terrors of dark night. Just as their captain, Jesus the Christ, triumphed over the grave and death itself, winning for us all the blessings promised by the Beatitudes and the great eternal gifts of faith, hope, and love to carry us, to carry us, his people, through the perils of politics and plagues to the safety of his eternal life and outstretched arms of love. And so today we remember God's ultimate victory and that he has made us his children to belong to him and be part of that. And so we say, Amen. So be it. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us then and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost and the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge those who quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is faith by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Michael our primate, Eugene and Robert our bishops, 
that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that, with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Donald, our president, Lawrence, our governor, and Bernard, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that, rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Robert, Ethan, Gabrielle, the Lay family, the Dew family, Diane, Dean, Catherine, Gail, Kemp, Claudia, Gail, Aurora, Joyce, Vernon, Bard, Andrew, Thomas, Christine, Caroline, Colleen, Alyssa, John, Russell, Anne, Rita, Michael, Walter, Tim, Baby Scarlett and her parents, Casey Lynn, the destitute ministered to by the Sisters of St. Margaret in Haiti, those endangered by armed conflict, the unemployed, the homeless, those traveling, the imprisoned, among them Ted. Jennifer Liu in home hospice, Jean, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, Amen. especially our deceased benefactors, those who have died by pandemic, violence, battle, or murder, and those who have died suddenly and unprepared. Beseeching me to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of Our Lady, Blessed John, and of all thy saints that with them we may be partakers of this heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. And because we will not have a celebration of All Souls Day tomorrow, we place before God the souls of all who have died, all our relatives, friends, neighbors, countrymen, and ask his blessing upon them. Now, let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may be in thy will and walk in thy way to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with heart and repentance and through faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. We exchange the resurrection greeting. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Do we have 
any announcements for today? I'm glad so many of you, well, you got a little bit of extra sleep, but you ended up here at the right time. I came in, I was afraid I'd see two or three people sitting here an hour ago who forgot to change their clock. Good to see you all today. God be with you. Let us present the offerings and oblations representing our life and our labor to the Lord. It is very meet, right, in our bounden duty that we should all times and all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and everlasting God, who in the multitude of thy saints has encompassed us about with so great a cloud of witnesses that we, rejoicing in their fellowship, may run 
with patience the race that is set before us, and together with them may receive the crown of glory that fadeth not away. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy holy name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and it instituted in this holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and body. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may, may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world, grant, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in, in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, 
but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts with faith and thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou hast feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and thus assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness toward us, and that we are very members and comfort in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost, we all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Be amongst you and remain with you this All Saints Day and always. Amen. Amen. Depart in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.